so you guys know there's a lot of cases that there's just not enough information for me to give you a full story on, but there are hundreds of news reports every day of different things that happen. What is a firing squad? <laughs> oh my God. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, the reason that I do this in the first place is because most actually, no, I'm sorry, all violent crimes, in my opinion, stem from unprocessed trauma that leads to violent acts. I show you guys a lot of this stuff because I really need you to look at yourselves and look at the people around you and not make the same mistakes that they did. So even though we don't always have the full story, it's always interesting for you to see the aftermath, whether it be in court or just kind of a rundown of what happened and how it affected other people. This video, it says Marlon Joseph was sentenced to death after he murdered a mother and her daughter in 2017. Bro, this one scared me because they got the spit guard on him. Marlon, bro. Appropriate weight to each aggravating factor and determine they are singularly and in combination with each other more than sufficient to justify a sentence of death as to each count of first degree murder in this case. I think what she's basically saying is it's not about how many charges you have from this case itself or from the past. It's about how heinous this crime was. Having determined that the proven aggravating factors are sufficient, the court then undertook the weighing of the proven aggravating factors against the established mitigating circumstances. The court finds that as to each count of first degree murder considered separately, the proven aggravating factors there were two victims. the established mitigating circumstances. Moreover, this court recognizes it must give great weight to the jury's recommendation of death. Damn, this the court jury fully said agrees that? with the jury's unanimous recommendation based on an independent review and assessment of the aggravating factors and mitigating circumstances. Damn, the jury said. This court finds mm -hmm. the aggravating factors heavily outweigh the mitigating circumstances and that death is the proper penalty. Is it weird to you guys at all looking at somebody receiving their death sentence? being told that all 12 of these people just went back there and decided that you are such a threat to, to society that you need to be put away and then be put to death. This is why I was tying this into what I was talking about, like with trauma and, and, and things like that before. When we talk about the murder cases and it's everything that led up to it, the murder itself, how they got caught, this, that, and the third, I think that's where a lot of people that commit violent crimes, I kind of think that's where their brain stops. It, it stops at, I'm mad at this person. I can't handle the anger I'm feeling. I need to end them. I need to end it. But they don't fucking think about when they're sitting in this courtroom and everyone is accepting your inevitable death. You're sitting in this room with all these people, but you've been cast out of society to the point that they've decided that you have to die. It's so strange and it's so surreal. And I'm like, ain't nobody thinking about this when they're in the moment, huh? This is real. Like this is real well, shit, bro. Joseph, you have not only forfeited your right to live among us, Damn. but under the Damn. laws of the state of Florida, you have forfeited your right to live at all. Sorry. Accordingly, it okay, is Siri, hereby we didn't ask for the and judge that, as to count one, for the first degree murder of Pilar Crowell, Marlon Louise Joseph shall be delivered into the custody of the Florida Department of Corrections at the Florida State Prison. You shall be confined there until a date certain selected by the governor of the state of Florida, and on that date, you shall be executed in a method provided by Florida law. Man, I remember being a kid and finding out about uh, the death penalty and being like, the government can just kill you? And like reading all the ways they kill you and be like, they can just do this? They can just do this? What is a firing squad? Chat, is that a spit guard or is that a COVID mask? And he just made it real scary. Also, I feel like, I wonder if there's some people that take some pride and like, oh, like I'm a death row inmate. Like, is there? sure like is that how they accept this i would be crying i would be throwing up peeing screaming like everything with a three-year mandatory minimum sentence what's he about to do the sentence for count uh, three shall run consecutively to the sentences pronounced in counts one and two therefore uh, dude remember? also that's got to be so surreal. Like, I can't get over this. Like, you have now been cast out of society. You are being sentenced to death. And just the way that he just looked around the room is so eerie to me. Have you ever been in a room where there were no 
allies. Marlon Reese Joseph, may God have mercy on your soul. Dang, you gonna sentence me to death and then say, may God have mercy on your, oh, I guess like for the afterlife. No, he needs that. Are they, is this the, I think they pan over the family. <laughs> no, they're crying. I can't handle, oh, dude. I said that I show y'all this stuff because this is what makes it real, but then I can't handle it. When something bad like this happens, the only thing that you feel like you can get is justice and an appropriate sentencing. But if that's like the grandma of this mom and, you know, her, basically her granddaughter, even a death sentence, it doesn't feel that for you. It doesn't. Some people fight so hard for that justice for the longest time and they never get it. But then those that do, you still have to find your own way to grieve. And it's, God. Dude. Ugh. Bro, I feel like I've heard so many cases of this lately. Drunk driving defendant sentenced to 50 years for a crash that killed three. Mark wanted life in prison. The defense wanted 20 years, so the judge picked a different number. Wait, how do you guys feel about that? 20 years if somebody had an accidental crash that killed three people? Chat, give me your opinions. Do you think that's too much or too little? And also, don't be at each other's throats. This is opinion time. And what do we do here? We respect each other's opinions. We're not like those people that jump down other people's throats. Too little, too little. He was drunk. It's fair. Drunk driving. It's fair. Depends on how the accident happened. Not an accident. Oh, let's see if it is. We'll see when we dive into this. 20 to life. Too much. Fair. Too much. Mixed. Okay. Mixed up. True crime has been hard for me lately. Like I want to cry sometimes. I can't express how often I, cause I know friends that do this like pretty frequently and stuff. I can't express how often people think, oh, you know, I've had two or three drinks. I'm fine to drive. But what ends up happening is that same friend when they have six or seven drinks, they say to themselves, oh, I'm good at driving drunk. One in the chat, if you've heard a friend say before, oh, I'm a good drunk driver. I'm good at driving drunk. I can't, it's wild how much people say that. Some people have the two or three drinks and they hop in the car, you know, maybe they had a dinner, a glass of wine, something like that. But it becomes a real slippery slope when you getting away with driving, like having two or three drinks turns into you thinking that you can have five or six drinks. And then you think the worst that's going to happen is getting pulled over or getting a DUI, or how much is this gonna cost? Nobody thinks about this. You've taken everything oh. from us. Oh my God. You can't get Grandpa. it back. There is no forgiveness for this. I wake up several times at night from pain, but also from nightmares. My nightmares include being left at the scene, screaming oh. for help when oh. you weren't there. Prosecutors asked the judge to throw Pereira in jail for life. The defense asked for 20 years. Don't y'all be drinking and driving. Look, there's 7,000 people in here right now. I swear to God, none of y'all better end up on the news talking about some drunk driver kills one, kills two. Drunk driver does anything. Don't do it. Judges, actually, not just judges, because some of y'all be sniffing it out too. Judges can sniff that out from a mile away. If you're only apologizing because you want to go home with your mom, it's not going to work. Man accused in triple murder has courtroom outbursts again now oh boy here we go your job is to do your job not to worry about me that's what i'm saying well i worry about me you worry about your self that's bryce rhodes what? talking to judge charles cunningham rhodes is accused of shooting christopher jones then stabbing to death two witnesses 14 year old larry ordway and 16 year old what? maurice gordon rhodes has already been okay you know what he probably thinks this is real gangster sitting here talking shit to the judge like this gonna kill this man and then leave no witnesses that's what he thinks it is he thinks it's gangster some hood shit right all this murder and you still aren't based this is some fucking clownery kiss lips nobody's watching this and it's like oh oh damn he hard as fuck he are nobody's watching this thinking that you're a normie and a beta male cuck through two attorneys and is now asking for his third one to be removed i'll just ask you why do you keep refusing to get this man off my case when we keep having problems do you have something personal against me to where you don't want to move him no sir like i him. have something personal against not providing you effective assistance of counsel judge cunningham says he has already called the state public defender's office they have struggled to find someone who could represent you and that basically mr griffiths is what they've got Rhodes once had to wear a <laughs> face mask because he spit on an attorney i write the bar social and the aclu you okay. know i write them and the, you know and i see the what's ACLU, going on really? you know 
Fair enough. Let's get us a date to come back. No. I ain't gonna fat out though. Dude, dealing with these people is so stressful because they are so far gone and so obsessed with control that they just they just won't let up. It's giving me Amber vibes over here. The exchange angered the grandmother of Ordway and Gordon, who were brothers. This is going on for four years, and, and, and nothing's been done. She later apologized. The judge, is, he's, he, he, like he said, he wants he, everything dotted. Yeah. He wants to do it the right, everything's done the right way, regardless of what Mr. Bryce Rose is saying in there. But she remains frustrated. He's just playing the system. He's playing them. He, he's getting on everybody's nerves. That's all he's doing. He's getting on everybody's nerves. Oh my God, Jesus. We've seen a lot of baby snatching cases, huh? When you're pregnant, watch out for overly friendly women. A Colorado woman gets a century behind bars for one of the most unthinkable crimes. It all started with a fake pregnancy and ended with her cutting another woman to steal her unborn child. Goodbye. Number 7 Russell Haythorn was at today's sentencing and Russell Michelle Wilkins was there to see her attacker sentenced. She, she was in the courtroom today, and this case was so distressing on so many levels. It went all the way to the state capitol last year, forcing lawmakers to take up the issue of unborn children and murder charges. Um, it seems like they've already stepped in on unborn children. But today, the victim said both society and justice responded appropriately. Judge Maria Birkencotter, stern she and like, commanding. Oh, she, she looked like she about to give us some justice. That's where we got that 100 year sentence. Chat, 100 years for trying to steal another woman's unborn baby, or, and essentially I'm assuming that the baby passed away. 100 years, fair or too little? I'm gonna have to say fair, what y'all say? Yeah, those are my boys, all right, my bozos. No, the baby lived, the baby lived? Still fair. The, the intent is terrifying. People are hungry to hear from Miss Lane, to hear why you did this. Hungry to desperate to hear you explain what happened to Aurora. Burke and Cotter sentenced Dinell Lane to 100 years in prison for faking her own pregnancy, then luring Michelle Wilkins into her home and cutting Wilkins almost full term baby out of her womb. I've never seen a case as vicious as cruel as deliberate uh, and as awful as this case. I would like to once again take a moment because when I talk about these things, I try to make you guys look at yourselves and look at the people around you. Okay, so right now in this moment, you're good, right? I need you to think into the future. Listen to me, don't do anything crazy. Don't hurt anybody. Don't fucking do it. Can you guys look at how awkward it is being in this courtroom? Sitting here while everyone's talking about what you fucking did and you have no say. You gonna go out here and hurt people because you want power and control. This, this, don't do anything crazy. Go to therapy. Get control of your emotions. Charges in this case were related to Wilkins injuries, not the harm inflicted on the unborn child. So Wilkins wanted the sentencing phase to be about her daughter, Aurora, even displaying a large photo of Aurora. Aww in court. We didn't want her, as my father so eloquently said, not to have her day in court. Wilkins called her attacker a narcissistic liar who See, only cried in court like out of self-pity when her own family begged the judge for leniency. The most emotional that I saw her was when the letter from her daughter was being read. And it occurs to me and didn't escape Judge Birkencotter's notice either that those are all the Things that I didn't get to have with Aurora because of Dinell. Another telling comment from the judge today. She said, quote, there's always been the question of whether Miss Lane killed Michelle and tried to take Aurora because she wanted a baby or merely because she wanted proof that she was pregnant. The judge said those are two very different things. Having no um, empathy for those around you to the point of wanting to protect your own horrible lie. Wait, I gotta see this. Mother says her daughter should be sterilized during her murder sentencing. This was something else. It was a startling turn of events. A mother took the stand during her daughter's sentencing and let her have it. Oh yeah, Channel 2's Tom Jones is live in Clayton County. Tom, the defendant's mother 
asked the court to give her daughter the maximum punishment. Why? Most of the time, you know, moms be in court like, baby, no! What did I do? Let her go. What do you mean? Asked the judge to give her daughter life without parole, and she told Harp there are consequences when you are manipulative, when you are a liar, and when you are a murderer. With no regards whatsoever, you murdered and you snatched Angel's dad away from her. One relative after the other. I hope God don't have mercy on your soul. Oh my God. Don't have mercy on his. Took the stand during this sentencing hearing for convicted murderer Sierra Harp. So we're asking that the court impose the maximum punishment. Oh my but God. But not have the impact of Harp's own mother. You reveled in disrespect, oh my foolery, and ignorance. Adrena Thurman gave her daughter a tongue lashing. Wherever you went, Chaos and trouble was sure to follow. Oh, a jury convicted Harp last month for the murder of Raheem Grant, the father of her child. Harp recorded herself minute. shooting Grant. Oh my God. Let me tell you guys about this case. I just realized what this is. I've talked about this case so many times because it sickens me. Has anyone ever hurt you before and you're like, this can't be happening. I'll just pretend like it's not happening or I'll pretend like I deserve it or I'll just put this in a box and just, you know, they didn't mean to hurt me. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. No, this woman is a fucking monster. So her partner for many, many years excused her actions just like that. He said, oh, I can take it. Oh, she's lying to me. Oh, she's doing this. And it was easier to just not say anything. She was manipulating her partner the whole time, doing all this crazy stuff, being a horrible. She was cheating on him just all, all over the place. She was beating him up. And I'm not sure if they had a child together, but ultimately she went into his home, set up a camera to record him or the argument or whatever. But she also showed up with a gun and they started, it wasn't even an argument. It was a couple lines back and forth. And then she shot him and he was saying like, please, please stop. And she was getting in his face saying like, like, is this what you wanted? Is this what you want? She shot him again. This is all recorded. And then he's saying like, please stop, please stop. And then she, she was saying some crazy shit like, you're not going to hurt me. You're not, you're not going to get away with it. Da, da, da. And she like shot him again. She gets on the phone and she calls 911 and she starts to say that he was rushing her. And while he's dying, He's listening to her on this 911 call claim self-defense and say he rushed her. She had to shoot him. She's so scared right now. It's, it's really, really disturbing. But this is the case that taught me people will hurt you. They will physically hurt you. They could shoot you and then blame you to your face and then blame you to the rest of the world. Harp recorded herself shooting Grant multiple times over several minutes in front of their daughter. Yes, Harp gave dude. her mother the stink eye and mouth of profanity, then called her a female dog after she lit into her. Thurman said Grant told her... And you know what? That's why her whole family said that she should be given the maximum sentence because they don't want... They, uh, look, they don't want her out either. And not a single fuck was given that day. He was improving his life and had new plans. I know for a fact these oh. plans did not include you. She, she thinks that's why Harp that. murdered Grant. Grant's mother wanted the death penalty, but it wasn't on the table. You showed no mercy for my son, Sierra, and I should ask the court to show no mercy for you. And the judge Damn. delayed sentencing Harp until later this month because one of her attorneys left the case. We're live in Clayton County. The Tom attorneys Jones, left Kuwait. the case. But I ain't never. Heard, I don't hear attorneys leaving the case often. I feel like they wanted to get paid. I thought, hello. Okay, we got another one. Another person sentenced for a deadly crash. What is it this time? Almost buying this for a minute. When people are in an extreme um, state like this of shame and, and, and asking and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, they usually don't ask for forgiveness for themselves. So in the middle of this crying, he says, and I wish we could now finally all of us begin to heal for just a small moment. 
he's calling for empathy on himself. I, I want to ask you guys this, especially you guys that um, internalize a lot of blame and you basically, <laughs> do you hate yourself? Okay, you are an internal blamer. So him saying, I wish that we could all heal for a moment in this moment. That to me is like chiming in as like, ah, hold on a second. Let's continue. Having like a partner, a husband, wife, um, fiance, or, you know, very, very significant, like significant other you've been with for a very long time is absolutely devastating because what it essentially teaches you is like, you know, it feels like a lot of things that we learn are like from childhood, but let's say you're in your early 20s. What that kind of teaches you is it makes you think I'm starting a new chapter of my life with this person. This is the way my life is going to be forever. And then the universe just comes in and says, I can take anything from you at any point that I want to. And now you must deal with it. And it's horrifying. It's so nonsensical. You think that you've learned most of the hard lessons that you're going to learn in your life. And then, um, that changes your entire trajectory. Losing a, a, a spouse or a significant other is like an otherworldly pain. It really is. Driving in the wrong lane. Well, they said that he has like a history of like mental illness. Somebody said that he intended to hit the car intentionally. It could have been a, a cry for help, some like attention seeking kind of behaviors, and it ended in a death that they didn't expect and they got attention that they weren't looking for. Dude, I go down a rabbit hole of these. I really do. Yo, y'all know when you see a video on like YouTube or TikTok and it's crazy as fuck and you're like, yo, I gotta show somebody. Y'all are that y'all are y'all are that for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> this one is suspects and cheerleaders murder appear in court. This is all justice, please, sir, for my child, please, your honor. <laughs> right now at 5:30, our camera's capturing the moment a mother and father see their daughters accused killers for the first time. Both men sitting in jail at this moment oh. charged with murdering 17-year-old high school cheerleader Carrie Rawls. Her parents in the room as those men made their first appearance at this court just this afternoon. Oh, Let's get right over to Adam Weiner live now with what happened next, Adam. Friends and family of Terry Rawls filled the courtroom today, many in tears as Terry's own mother stood before a judge and begged for justice. Man. I'm Terry L. Rawls' mother. Oh, my daughter's supposed to graduate this year. I'm sorry. She needed three credits. <laughs> she worked so hard. By all accounts, Yolanda Snipes' daughter, Terry Rawls, was simply in the wrong place Dude, at the wrong oh my time. God. My daughter don't know none of them. Snipes was before the judge for exactly 30 wrong seconds. Wrong place, wrong time. time. It was more than enough time for anyone to feel her pain. This is all justice to be served for my child, please, Your Honor. Oh, Manatee man. Manatee County detectives tell ABC Action News Terry L. Rawls was out late with friends early Monday morning when they ran into trouble. Oh. I lost a daughter behind stupidity. Stupidity. Witnesses tell detectives what that happened? as Terry and her friends drove away from a movie theater parking lot where they saw a fight break out, Terry was struck by a stray bullet. Yes, a uh, witness. <gasps> oh, actually, no. Oh my God! Terry Dude, y'all ever hear about straight like straight bullet deaths? I'm like, I swear to God, sometimes I'll just be sleeping at like weird angles in my house because I hear about this way too much. I have definitely laid in bed before and done threat assessment, like after reading a straight bullet story and been like, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. But can you imagine leaving a movie theater that night and the, like one bullet, a he stray didn't think bullet? Any bond should be set. I mean, it could happen again. I mean. Yeah, y'all can't be out here just evidence isn't shoot clear yet. people. The victim's mother was not the only grieving mom with an opinion about what happened. And on the behalf of my son, I don't believe within my heart. God have not showed me that he actually was the one that shot this child. But my compassion for the family do go out towards him. This puts Ultimately, a lot of tension the judge in families, set bond too. At one million dollars for each suspect, Frank Bryce and Jasper Dudley. One million dollars, y'all staying in jail. Ah, you know, let's just end with a good old Karen. You know, sometimes I just be clicking through. This one is a woman falsely accuses black man of stealing son's phone at Moreno Valley Walmart. Let's get into it, boys. <laughs> You, no, you know. Do you have my son's phone? But I when I told you, you I, no, phone. you did. I did not come at you like you that. You did. Oh, no, I did not. You did. Wrongfully accused, <laughs> a black man says tonight he was racially profiled and accused Dude, of. Hold on. I'm sorry. 
Y'all see, y'all see that ice around this man's neck. Y'all see the beard is all trimmed up. He don't need to take nobody's phone. The t-shirt is white and the jewelry is loud. Okay, come on, bro. <laughs> Wrongfully accused, a black man says tonight he was racially profiled and also accused of a stance. crime he did not commit by a woman in the Inland Empire. The woman claims he stole her son's cell phone, which you will see. Why is she in the Hallmark Karen pose? This is, is this it? I, I feel like it's more. She's got way more hit than I do, though. I'm gonna need somebody else to stand up and try right now. If you can naturally get into the Karen pose without contorting your body, you might be a Karen, because this is not easy. Did I get it? Oh my god, I got it! <laughs> Way too much fun here, bro. Okay. And tonight, Kate Cowan, Stacy Butler. Stacy Butler may look like a Karen at first glance, but let me tell you, this woman has textbook anxiety. Just look at the way <laughs> she looks when the camera pans over to her. With the story, Stacy. <laughs> uh, Susie, that video has now gone viral, and tonight, Yashir Bryant told me that he started a GoFundMe site because he plans to sue okay. for defamation of character and slander. No, you're recording me. No problem. I and have I a right to. No, you know. Do you have my son's phone? But and when I told you, you I, no, said you it, did. I did not come at you like that. No, 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 no. One in the chat, if you would be offended if a random woman came up to you and said, Excuse me, do you have my son's phone? Two in the chat, if that wouldn't offend you at all and you would start searching your pockets for a phone. Like, I mean, no matter what the tone is, the context of what you have said is heavily implicative of something and it's hurtful like i don't care what your tone is i know what your intent was too you did. a marino valley man says a walmart shopper wrongly accused him of stealing her son's cell phone then followed him to the parking lot and refused to let him go to his car Wait, until police arrived we're walmart. seeing you and tell me you give walmart. me my phone because it marks that you're here i don't have a phone no ma'am you're nope. really crazy you're following yep. me now now i am yes That's she the, is that, that phone i'm sorry he's not money. good yes. enough Yashir Bryant says he was shopping for curtains when he says he overheard this woman's son man. tell her he lost his phone. When she stopped and kept doing Look this. That. This woman's okay. son tell her he lost his phone. When she stopped and kept doing this, I felt so uncomfortable, ma'am. I left my basket there. I proceed to walk out. But Bryant says she followed him outside, accusing him publicly of stealing her son's phone. He says he tried to get to his car, but she stayed with him. He agreed to stay until the police came. He believes the woman racially profiled him because there was no evidence he stole the phone. Yeah, is it just me or does this guy seem super respectful and super passive? They said the confrontation actually started inside of the Walmart and he just didn't get his curtains. He just put the card away and he left and she followed him outside. In her brain, she was like, oh, this is somebody I could bully. I'm gonna follow him outside, I'm gonna get my way. Stay here with her because I didn't want to leave. Been in the same scenario and I've left and been accused of the one stealing something. So I stayed. Brian says he walked back into Walmart with the woman to report the harassment. She accused me of stealing a phone. Minutes later, her son walked up with the phone in his hand. He apparently found it in the car. Brian says he was Stop! looking for an apology, but she responded with an expletive. What? For her child to be right there, that would have taught him a lesson. I don't care if she was sincere or not. Oh the bigger lesson would have been Dude, for a kid. And I would have praised God that he would be able to see his mother set a good example. If that, if that kid, if y'all, if anyone knows that kid, if y'all run into him, bro, we are so sorry that you're we are so sorry, and we don't think you're like your mom, okay? We don't think so. Oh, we tried to reach out to the woman, but we couldn't find her by yeah, deadline. We, uh, we do understand. We have confirmed that she works for Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser put out a statement they saying put... they're actively investigating. They put... That's the very latest from Reno Valley. Back to you guys in the studio. Stacy, thank you. They put her job on blast. That is really something.